Hey there, Nick Tunithakis here. In this video, we're going to go over why it's a really good idea to use braces around your variables when doing shell scripting. So a couple of years ago, before I started YouTube, I wrote a blog post about why you should quote your variables in Bash, and this goes over a whole bunch of different examples, but it doesn't really go into too much detail about why you should use braces. By the way, I'm probably not going to make a follow-up video about quoting your variables, so if you're interested in that one, you can check this out here. I'll leave a link to this one in the description. But for now, let's focus on why you should basically always be using braces with your variables. So I do have an example script here set up that we can take a look at. And if I go and execute this script here, and by the way, uh, if you've watched previous videos, I did switch to, uh, to Z shell recently. I'm going to do some follow up videos about that one. But for now, let's focus on braces here. So, you know, feel free to skin this, read this uh, as fast as you like. But we're going to basically tackle this from top to bottom and kind of talk about all these patterns and, you know, how the braces are very, very helpful. So, for example, uh, you could totally just echo out a person, you know, if that's a variable here just by using this without braces, right? And you would get the response. So if I just add in something like, hey, and then person like this and rerun the script, then we are going to see, hey, look at that. We have uh, the person's name there. Totally works. But you know, what happens when you want to set a default variable or sorry, a default value on that variable here. So suddenly, you know, if you're not using braces here, then you really have no options because, you know, you can't just do something like person and then uh, just do this and like that. Like, you know, this is not going to work as you would expect right now. It just like literally puts that out as a string. So, you know, one good idea for using braces just for consistency sake is, you know, whether you're defining a variable regularly or with a default value, if you use the braces in both cases, then adding the default value is just adding a little bit more to it. You know, then we get into some interesting use cases here where, you know, is person cool and then person is cool. But if we don't put braces around the actual variable there, then bash or whatever, you know, shell interpreter you decide to use here is going to just think that's one big variable. Like this is going to think that person is cool is an actual variable, even though it's not. But when we wrap it in braces, then it's super clear on, you know, what's an actual variable and what is just a string sitting next to it. And then we also have another interesting use case around consistency or you know not being confused. And this one comes to you know where you might have a variable that uh, happens to have something like a prefix. You know if you're like using Stripe style IDs where they prefix their ID with this, or you know it doesn't really matter, right? And then you have some value after that. Uh, using the underscore here, it's actually not very clear on whether or not you know this is one variable or is this thing actually two variables where you're just using an underscore to uh, delimit them. So you know if you look here at the output, we can see in the first case, again, this is another case where your interpreter is going to think that prefix underscore ID is the actual variable name, when in fact, it's really two separate variables with an underscore in between, especially, you know, with something like bash, where it's common to use an underscore to separate your variables. This one's really important. And, you know, using braces here makes it super straightforward on what's going on there just at a very quick glance. And then there's like, you know, adding certain features that you may want to add. For example, if you wanted to truncate a string, you kind of just need to use braces here to get that behavior if you're using bash, right? So, you know, if you look at this variable get shot here, it's like a really long, normal, typical get shot. But let's say you want to truncate that down to eight characters. And, and that's what we see here. But in the first case, you know, you can't just do colon zero colon eight there because then it's going to just be like, okay, that's part of the string. Let me just add that to the very end. But then if we use braces here, well, suddenly we get the expected behavior that we want. Our git shy is eight characters long and everything is super clear just by looking at that. I mean, it's clear in the sense that like, you know, what's the variable and, you know, certain things being passed in here, you know, but in case you didn't know, this is how you can truncate a string in bash. And you can also put like two here instead of uh, zero and it is going to start from uh, the third character here. So the one now we can see. Great. So, you know, maybe I'll do a separate video about that in more detail. But now let's move on to the next example of uh, using braces, right? So let's say that we have an array. So we have a couple of different colors here, you know, red, blue, green. And let's just say like, what color is the sky? So most people probably think the sky is colored blue. And that's what I think as well. But we can't just reach in and grab the second element in that array using the square brackets without the braces here. Because if we do that, then it's just going to be like, okay, well, you know, the variable that we have here is uh, colors, and it's just going to interpret that as red, I guess it just grabs the first one, and then it's going to treat the square brackets as like literally uh, a string after the variable. But if we use braces here, then we can just reach in and grab whatever index that we'd like. So if you wanted to get the first index, which should return red now, uh, then we, we're going to get that the sky color is red. So everything works exactly how we expect it to. And then, you know, yeah, that's basically how that works. And then lastly, over here, we also have uh, arguments. And 
you know, it's not super common to have a script that takes like 10 different arguments, I guess. But if you are reading all the args, you know, you can always use dollar sign at symbol here and that's going to print out all the arguments. But let's just say that you wanted to reference the 10th argument. So you can't just use dollar sign one zero here because if you do that, then it is going to get uh, the first argument here, which is a and then again, just like some of the other examples, it's going to treat the zero here as just a string that comes uh, after that. So we get a zero in the end here, when really, if you want to get the 10th argument, that is going to be J, because that is the 10th letter of the alphabet in English, at, the, at least here. But yeah, this is basically just a couple of examples of why you should use braces. And yeah, I mean, if you've looked at any of my shell scripts, you know that I typically have been using braces for a long time. If I'm not, then usually it's typically uh, an error on my part, right? Maybe I just forgot it. But if you are using something like shell check as well, you can run that against your script. And here we can see that shell check is even going to warn you about these things where it's going to be like, well, look at that, you know, person is cool is referenced, but not assigned. So it's going to warn you that you know, this variable isn't really doing what you'd expect it to do. Likewise, with the prefix ID one, it's the same deal here. You know, it thinks that's just one variable. And also over here, you know, it even explicitly says like, you know what, you should use braces when expanding arrays, and then it tells you exactly how to do it. Uh, also with this one, when it comes to the arguments, this one's going to say braces are required for positional arguments over nine, and it even tells you exactly what to do. So yeah, that's really handy to run shell check against your script. I do have a video about that one, so I'll leave a link to that one in the card in case you want to check that it went out. But uh, in this case, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps a lot in the end. On that note, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.